Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues today. Nike Hot Seat, very special guest, Wayne Eric Boyd, the man, the myth, the legend. He joins us fresh off his trip to Las Vegas, Nevada, in the U.S. Open Championship title. Titan Mercury has done it again. The Titan Mercury Wrestling Club continues to grow. Wayne, congratulations to you, Andy Barth, uh, Malena, Johnny, everybody on the staff. This has been a huge effort, but again, you guys prevailed. Well, uh, we sent over 100 people to that event, <clears throat> and uh, thanks to Andy Barth, we're able to do that. We gave a lot of people chances. We had 33 wrestlers actually qualify at each weight, keeping in mind that we've got about seven that pre-qualified that weren't there. Tyler Graff, uh, he, he can be very competitive at 57 kilos. He's off to the Pan Ams. We didn't have Snyder there. We didn't have Cox there. We didn't have Stever there. So by the time we get to world team trials, we're going to have 40 plus guys. And uh, I expect um, to win all eight weight classes at the world team trials based on what I saw at the U.S. Open. Amazing. And really our philosophy at Titan Mercury is to drive towards the best possible guy. Uh, I would like to see guys wrestle off right to the week before the U.S. Open. Keep it competitive. Nobody should be given a spot two months early and, and then they train and get ready. You don't know what uh, their mental state is. We need to be more competitive on these World Olympic stages. And I think the better the guy is the better chances he has of winning. And the way you build the best guy is putting him in the room with all the other best guys and let him just fight it out, fight it out. Sooner or later, you got to pick one or select one from a wrestle-off. But I think we're way ahead of ourselves. We picked the guys a little too early. Some of the guys are obvious that you know they're the best guys. But I don't know that we have that in any weight class right now. I mean, you can't call Burroughs that much better than Dake. Dake's on the move. I thought Dakes had uh, Burroughs beat, uh, and uh, he let him get away. But Burroughs is very good in that last minute. He's very savvy. Uh, he got a break when they put Dake on the clock. That, that helped him win that match. Uh, Oliver's vulnerable, although he's very tricky, a lot like Ramos. Those guys know how to win in the last minute, 30 seconds. So you got to be with them or ahead of them going into that uh, end of the match. But uh, I'm proud of all the guys, not just the Titan Mercury guys. I'm proud of everybody that comes out and wrestles, competes. And we had a great championship. We had four champions, three seconds. And uh, we placed another 25-plus uh, guys in the wrestlebacks. So we're, we're excited going forward. We're glad to help wrestling. Andy Barth is uh, full on charge ahead. I think the pro league is going to bring a lot of excitement to the elite athletes. Well, and eventually that pro league might just pr provide the Olympic and the world teams. Well, let's talk about that in a minute, but before we do that, let's finish with our tight Mercury wrestling club performers that did very well. The club continues to gain strength in women's numbers as well. Becca Leathers, Mallory Velti, Tamara Mensa, and Victoria Francis will all represent the United States and Paris, France at the 2017 world championships. Uh, Wayne, it was, it was not that long ago where we didn't have that many women's wrestlers. Now Titan Mercury has some of the very best and some of the best in the world. Well, you got to give Marcy Van Dusen uh, Lane a lot of credit for that. She does a great job with the ladies. Uh, I was so proud to see four make the world team. Um, you know, we're charging ahead, and we, we put in the time, and we put in the money, and we put in the effort. A lot of people think, oh, you're just buying wrestlers. No, we're not only putting guy wrestlers in a position to be able to uh, uh, concentrate on their training. We're putting them in a position to do things they've ne never been able to do before, like travel. Sometimes it's as simple as sending them to Penn State for a week or sending them to Iowa for a week. But we're involved, intimately involved, in each and every one of our wrestlers' success. So Titan Mercury athletes, let's let's go down the freestyle ranks. 57 kilos from Titan Mercury. Third place, Nathan Tomasella, fourth, Frank Pirelli, Alan Waters in sixth, and then Jesse Delgado in seventh. Is there uh, 
Anything you want to say about 57 kilos? Well, I thought in the seating meeting they set the they stacked the deck <clears throat> against the Titan Mercury wrestlers. Uh, Megalutis and Tomasello should have never met in the quarterfinals. They should have been in separate brackets. If one's in one bracket, the other's in the other bracket, I think the entire outcome of that weight class changes. I think we're going to see some change at the World Team Trials, although i got to give Tony Romas a lot of credit. He came back strong. He looked like his old self um, back winning and U.S. Open champion, uh, former Titan Mercury wrestler, now Sunkist. Uh, so i got to give him a lot of praise, but I thought – they stacked the deck against me in the seating meeting. <clears throat> and, uh, of course, I tried to prove that point. I thought the loser of Tomasello would take third, which he did, but I thought the winner would go on to win it. Uh, Megalutis lost a come-from-behind last-second match to Ramos. 61 uh, kilos. So. The champ there, Kendrick Maple, uh, he really blew through his opponents, Coach, I think. At the end of the day, he scored 53 points, I believe it is, over uh, his opponents. And that's that's a lot of points. So you have champion Kendrick Maple, Cody Brewer in fourth, Joe Colon in sixth, and Chris Dardanes in seventh, all tight Mercury. Uh, Maple called me about two months ago and said, Hey, Coach, I think I'm ready. I'm ready to commit to this thing. I, I, I'm training hard. You know, he, he's he's coaching now, and he's putting in a lot of that mature time. That can help a wrestler. So uh, I said, sure, you're in my book as one of the really good guys that can put some pressure on Stever. So let's see what you do at the U.S. Open. He showed up. The kid's huge for that weight class. He's so much bigger than everybody, uh, but he's got a ways to go to get past Stever. Stever is the world champion, and he is one tough cookie four-time NCAA champ, if I recall as well. We go to 65 kilos. We're talking with Eric uh, Eric Wayne Boyd, and or Wayne Eric Boyd, as some people call him. 65 kilos, second place, Frank Molinaro for Titan Mercury. Fifth place, Evan Henderson and Nick Dardanes. We had another Dardanes. We had Chris at 61, the bigger of the two, Nick, in seventh place for Titan Mercury. Uh, guys did a good job. I thought Molinaro... Uh... Had a chance to win that match again. Oliver knows how to pull him out. He's very, very good at that. And he slipped past Molinero. I'm looking for a big change there at the World Team Trials. Uh, I'm going to stay with Molinero on that, uh, not to say my other guys can't step up and, and win as well. And you're talking, of course, about the World Team Trials that will take place in Lincoln, Nebraska, just, uh, well, we're counting down the days. The champion at 70 kilos was James Green. Now, remember, this is going to be in James Green's backyard in Lincoln, Nebraska. Coach, does that change the complexion of this weight for the field? I, I think uh, Manning's got his two best guys, Green and Burroughs. One's an Olympic world champion. The other one's a bronze medalist in the world. These are great guys. Proud to have uh, Green on Titan Mercury Wrestling Club. But Nazar is pushing hard. we got Chamberlain, who fell off a little bit. He can beat anybody at any given time. That's going to be a great weight class. Uh, and the winner of that weight class is going to compete on the world stage. That's just the way it is. And, and uh, you know, Green, Green right now is the man and has been for a while. Looks good, and he's benefiting from training right alongside and with Jordan Burroughs. Let's go to 74 kilos. You mentioned Kyle Dake. He took second. Alex Derringer in third and fifth place, Chris Perry. What are your thoughts about 74 kilos? Does Burroughs own it? It seemed like he's back, but not by that much more than Dake. Well, you know, Dake's been out of action for a while. He had some surgeries. He's, he hasn't wrestled in well over a year. So I think having not wrestled in a year and to come out and tie Burroughs, and he was ahead most of the match. And if they don't put uh, Dick on the clock in the last 40 seconds, Dick wins that match. Burroughs didn't come close to taking uh, Dick down. Dick was very close to taking Burroughs down. I think it's time for a change there. I'm a big uh, 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 Burroughs fan. I mean, one of the best wrestlers America has ever produced, but he's – Definitely lost a step. 
and and it's like uh, losing a leg. You don't grow it back. It's hard to get that step back. And uh, Dick's hungry, very, very hungry. Keep in mind, he's never wrestled on a world team. He's never wrestled on an Olympic team. And there's no doubt in my mind he's world and Olympic caliber. So Burroughs got his work cut out for him, world team trials. I'm going to go with Dake. Let's go at 86 kilos. You mentioned how big David Taylor looked and how good he looked. Well, indeed, he crowned himself the champion. He took that weight away from everybody else. Kyle Crutchmer, also a uh, tight Mercury Wrestling Club cat. He took sixth, seventh place Gabe Dean. Honestly thought Gabe Dean would do better than seventh place. I think Gabe's having a little trouble adjusting. I think he lost a critical match in his career at the NCAAs. He's getting over it, but that takes time. And uh, he's he's got to freshen up on his freestyle. But I'm I'm a big Gabe Dean fan. He's one of the toughest guys in wrestling. Uh, he's got to get his game back up. And once he does, uh, believe me, he, he's a formidable opponent. This Bo Nickel look good, serious player. We didn't talk about Rutherford down at uh, 65. He was my pick to win the weight. Look at it, World Team Trials. He learned a lot at the U.S. Open, as did Bo Nickel, and hopefully Gabe Dean. But that's a very tough weight class. Uh, David Taylor's head and shoulders above most of those guys. His technique, his experience, his confidence. I mean, he's on a roll. He looks very, very good. And I think he's going to give Jay Den Cox if Jay Den shows up, we know he's playing football. He may take the world team trials off. Nobody's really sure. But those two guys are going to be, like Dave Burroughs, sensational match. Another team title for Team Tight Mercury. We're breaking down the performance of Tight Mercury athletes at the U.S. Open. 97 kilos, men's freestyle. The Burraks. Here we go. Second, third, Micah, and then uh, Nathan, and then Ty Walls. The young man from Virginia Tech just finishing his collegiate career comes in fifth. Talk about 97, Coach. Hey, very proud of those guys. We, we picked up Walls and um, <clears throat> Burrag brothers are training hard at Iowa. Uh, they're serious about what they're doing, but nobody's getting past Snyder. So Snyder steps back in the ring at the World Team Trials. He sits out, waits for everybody to find out who gets a shot at him. I don't see anybody beating Snyder. He's just pretty much invincible. Mm. Yeah, I think you're right, uh, at least right now. Champion, of course, at heavyweight, Nick Gwizdowski. I was told by Zach Ray at the NCAAs he's tired of me saying Nick Gwizdowski's name. I think we're well, going to be saying uh, his name quite a bit in the coming years. Ray is going to get real tired of that name. Uh, Gwiz handled him well, wrestled him very smart. Alger, Royce Alger's been working with Gwiz. Uh, Gwiz spent some time with uh, Kale Sanderson and Casey Cunningham. These guys are a step ahead of everybody, trust me. Uh, Penn State proved it at the NCAAs. Great coaching, great mindsets. They're good in every position. And you can point to one guy for that, if, or two guys, Casey Cunningham, Kale Sanderson. Great coaching, great great putting a team together. Look out, Penn State's here to stay. And I think uh, I think Wiz is the man now. I'd like to see him get a little bit stronger. I don't know how much more weight he can handle, but, you know, just bigger and better, bigger and better. He's just got to keep plowing ahead. He can wrestle. I talked with Blair Boyd. He is one half of the uh, foundership of the – Wonderful tight Mercury Wrestling Club out of San Marino, California. Let's move to the women. 48 kilos in second, Cody Fowl, and then the Doys stepped into action. Marina in fourth, Regina in fifth. That was 48 kilos, Coach, and, and we don't necessarily need to break it down, but I know you want to give a broad uh, a round of applause to these young ladies as they are out there just getting better. And on the world stage, the U.S. is now a feared team. Well, Helen Morales did the impossible by winning the Olympic Games and beating a three-time Olympic champ who was about to win her fourth gold medal. She stopped that. Kind of reminded me of Rulon Gardner beating Alexander Kareelin. It was a great victory. Uh, I don't think Helen's getting near the coverage she deserves. I wish uh, the Olympic people would have seen the potential in this young lady. I mean, she's smart, she's talented, uh, and she does speak to the world about women's wrestling and all the girls are getting better 
because of Helen, because of the girls that came before Helen. Adeline Gray slipped a little bit. She'll she'll be back strong. She she uh, she she's she's very tough at her weight class. But uh, we put a lot of time into the women. And again, Marcy Van Dusen Lane gets it done, and she's got some great coaches, and and those girls want to win, and hence we have four on the uh, on the world team as we speak. And I think uh, the world team for women is that six or eight weight classes, Scott. Uh, last I checked, it was six. But how about this? Your world team members for Tight Mercury, Becca Leathers. She's got nothing but upside. Mallory Velty, same thing, nothing but upside. Tamara Mensa, man, is she coming into her own? And Victoria Francis gets it done again. Very, this- very strong performances. Mensa, especially, she won a big tournament this winter that kind of put her put her on this course she's on. Her confidence is way up, and, and she wrestles well. I more and more enjoy watching the women wrestle because they just keep getting better. Their technique, their strength, their their focus on the sport. They're so fighting. I think we're very happy to have the women involved. All right, so Titan Mercury wins again the 2017 U.S. Open with four world team members and four national champs. Now we move on next topic. And, Wayne, we've got about uh, about five or six minutes remaining. What can you do? What can you tell us? What, how can you update us about the the uh, uh, the project you've been working so dil- diligently on with Michael Novogratz and others? Well, it's called Prowl, and uh, we kind of, Dave Dean and I helped create that a long time ago, and Dave's been kind enough to allow release that title. Mike Novogratz likes it very much, Prowl, P-R-O-W-L, which broken down is Pro Wrestling League. Um, Mike's a very smart guy, Princeton graduate. He's going at this from a business standpoint. Uh, we're crossing all the T's, dotting the I's. I think we're, I think we're close to rolling out a format. Uh, it's going to involve our best guys and more, and we're going to be able to see uh, great wrestling in six different states, uh, focusing on some of the bigger fan bases such as Iowa State College. But we're we're going to be in Pittsburgh. We're going to be in. A, Oklahoma, we're going to be in Columbus, Ohio, we're going to be in LA, we're going to be in New York. It's going to be exciting, and I think the media coverage is going to be great. And I think it's time for a new professional sport here in America. You know, football's got its concussions, and baseball's got that huge long season. We're going to run about eight weeks. It's going to be exciting. You'll see the best of the best. We're going to build some crowds, some fan base. And uh, we're going to get a lot of publicity. And the good news is we're going to make some of these top elite guys some money they deserve so they can, you know, afford their lifestyle, their families, without this idea that, gee, i got to get one more fundraiser to help me along. I, I'm so glad to see wrestling stand on its own merits. I believe the sport deserves to be looked at as one of the great American sports. And this is going to help accomplish that. There's, there's no doubt in my mind. So uh, uh, can you describe how Prowl works? Uh, where do the teams come from? How are they assembled? Where do they, where do they live? Where are they, what is the genesis of the idea, number one? Number two, describe how it, uh, it would work for teams that would be competitive. I, I think eventually, uh, you know, we're going to get to a draft and uh, – It'll be done a lot like the NFL or a lot like the uh, basketball draft. We're not there yet. Uh, I'm not really sure in this first year if we're going to stick with the team concept. We may go more back to the uh, Iowa versus the world concept. Which was a great night. Yeah, great night. We put these events on. We put seven to 10,000 people in the stands. Uh, we're working on some television exposure, whether it's NBC uh, or ESPN. Uh, we're hoping to get that done. And then, of course, there's always the live stream, which uh, reaches a lot of people. It's not the most effective because you lose the uh, connection sometimes. But uh, it's probably the first year we're going to roll out, and it's going to be a little different. You're going to see much cleaner rules 
You're not going to see uh, referees kind of changing the outcome of matches. Uh, that's going to be the uh, most exciting thing about it is that we're going to make our own rules. And, uh, you know, I've always thought the pin was king. People want to see a pin. We're going to put more emphasis on the pin and guys can go for the pin. I think sometimes in freestyle world Olympic championships, the guys hold back so much because they just want to win to make that team. So they're wrestling very conservatively. You won't see that in the pro league. It's a performance. Guys will come out. They'll have images. They'll be the rock. They'll be the killer, whatever their nickname is. And it's going to be a lot more entertainment value. And they're going to be allowed to open up without some horrible penalty. Gee, you're not on the Olympic team this year. So the performances are going to go through the ceiling. And I think the entertainment value is really going to go sky high. And that's going to help the fans. Even fans that have never seen a match will be able to understand the scoring and enjoy the action. That's the best part about it. We're trying to uh, make the sport better by presenting it in a better way, a, a more professional way. Wayne Eric Boyd has been our guest today as we've covered, well, what just happened the weekend in Las Vegas. It was exciting indeed. The U.S. Open goes to Team Titan Mercury and the individual champions, man, they're out there, not sprinkled. No, they're, <laughs> they are heavily in the corner of Titan Mercury. Wayne, thank you so much for taking the time. You're looking great. I hope you have some golf in the offing for the afternoon boom out to the golf course but i do want to add one thing i think the margin of victory was the greatest margin of victory in the history of the u.s open uh i didn't get the exact score but it was something like 228 to 60 so uh Amazing. you know we're, we're on a roll we're not going to slow down we are going to change direction a little bit going into 2018 but we're here for wrestling we, we continue to build the sport, and I'm very excited to be part of Titan Mercury, and certainly my hat goes off to Andrew F. Barth, Andy Barth, just the guy's unbelievable. He's a hero. We all love him very much. He's a hero. He's a real hero. Wayne, we appreciate it. Nike Hot Seat special guest, Wayne Eric Boyd. You remember him from One More Shot and many other projects within the world of wrestling. He's a big deal in Hollywood and always will be in my estimation. I'm Scott Casper for Takedown Media. Thanks for watching this very special one-on-one -on -one as we take a look back, or took a look back as it were, at the U.S. Open. The 2017 edition belongs to Titan Mercury. Thank you, Scott.